This is Motor Merc to Mission Control, initiating pre-flight check and requesting departure clearance. Jazz one I'm sorry, sir, request the kill. Five golf Mike, uh, actually, I'm in altitude, descend me, team 11000. for takeoff. I'm on my way to Kawasaki headquarters in uh, Southern California, Kawasaki Motors. Uh, it's uh, in Lake Forest, which is a little bit south of Irvine, and I'm headed there because SpacePod turned me on to an event that they're having today which is, uh, I, on their website, I think Kawasaki calls it their uh, Kawasaki coffee break or something like that. So basically what it is, is they're revealing all their 2014 models today. They're gonna have them all out on display so people can come and check them out for the first time. So that should be cool. Uh, uh, like I said, Space Pod was kind enough to turn me onto the event, let me know what was happening and invite me to ride out with them. So. Uh, I'm on my way to meet him, and then we're going to ride the rest of the way together. And uh, my girlfriend decided to come along too, so I've got her on the back, doing a little two-up riding. Oh, hi, she says hi. Ooh, that's weird. She's adjusting my backpack. <laughs> Feels weird. A lot of the time on this bike, I don't even have to use the front brakes very much. I, I rarely use the rear at all, but you know, I don't use the front over much either because I don't know what it is. I think it's just that the compression is so good on this engine that uh, when, I, uh, when I do engine braking on this bike, I hardly have to use the brakes at all if I'm not doing a, a pretty hard stop, you know, like a performance stop or an emergency stop or something like that. So I don't really use the front brake very much. But when I'm riding two up, you know, the bike is just that much heavier. And man, the amount of front brake you have to use is a lot more. I'm just not used to it. You, you, you've got to really grab a, more of a handful of it. Ooh, like so. You missed the limit line there by a little bit, buddy. The first time you, you ride two up, just ride gentle the first time, I guess. I mean, it should go without saying, but be careful because, you know, the dynamics are going to be different. You just don't want to get caught unawares. So anyway, we're on our way to meet Space Pod, and then uh, I think we're going to meet, I don't even know what city that is, it's part of Anaheim. We're going to meet in Anaheim near uh, Angel Stadium, and then we're going to continue south to the meetup. This is me stuck at a red light because I took the wrong Chapman exit. Yeah, we need to go to the orange one. Oops. Yeah. We should soon be encountering a space pod. Now we are in the city of Orange. I know what city it is because I saw a road sign. So I can now tell you that it's Orange. And there's like a weird parking lot. It's not a park and ride, but it's like a, uh, yeah, I don't even know. It's like a special parking lot that they created for people to park when they go to work on construction projects in the area or something like that. So we're going to try and meet there, and if it's full, then we're going to go to a Best Buy parking lot across the street and meet up there instead. I don't know why that, why I felt that was important enough to include in the video, but now you know all about it. Where is the spacey pod? No trespassing. Oh, shit. So we're not supposed to trespass here then, eh? Let's check our texts. So we're going to go with the backup plan. Oh, this is some bullshit. No left turn, no U-turn at the next intersection. What the f*** am I supposed to do? Can I make a no U-turn here either? What the f***, man? This city, Best Buy parking lot, plan B. Do I want to go in here, or the next one? Definitely the next one. Space Pod, where art thou? There he is. This is where, uh, I'll just put a Reddit face on him. A rage face. Whee! Yeah! Good? 
Yep. Great. What a guess. How's it going, man? Good. How are you? This is. This is. Awesome. Cool. Um, yeah, you made it. Cool. So. Um, Sorry, I was a little late. Do you want your stickers now or later? Oh, we can do it later. Do you want to get there early or do you want to hang out for a little bit first? Um, no, we can just get going. Okay. Yeah, I just unpacked everything. How are you on gas? Because I got two bars. Uh, I got two bars, but that's like a hundred miles for me. Are those the pivot heads? Yeah. I'm going to try to interview some Cali people, so we'll see how that goes. How do you like being on the back of that bike? It's okay. Pretty used to it? It makes my back hurt. What? It makes my back, oh, your back hurt. I can see that. Oh, I wasn't recording. Now I am. Spacey pod. Girly friend. We are but visitors. Special parking for Kawasaki's. Did you see that dude, like, do the pull out? The other guy waved and then went the other way. I didn't know what was going on. You can't ride on it, but you can sit on it. So here we are at Kawasaki's North American headquarters in uh, beautiful Southern California. We're here in the atrium where they have the 2014 models on display. These are the new bikes that are coming out. Uh, they just wanted to have a little event. They're calling this uh, the Kawasaki Coffee Break. It's the first one of its kind. A uh, very small invite list. I'm very lucky that SpacePod uh, notified me about this, actually. Very happy that he uh, turned me on to it. We came out here to check out what's going on. Uh, it's cool. Uh, this is just a, an event for uh, Kawasaki owners to come and uh, meet the team basically all the employees that are here today are here as volunteers they're just you know they're they just like they could choose to come or not and they decided to come out and just you know share their time and sort of support the brand and uh, it's cool it's a real fun event we don't we don't actually get to ride these but they will allow us to sit on them check them out and uh, they have green donuts which are uh, very interesting and of course they're uh, they're sharing their coffee with us which is nice it's really interesting to come to an event like this with such a small invite list because it's just everybody has the opportunity to talk to kawasaki employees freely it's really nice it's a low-key low stress event it's it's pretty cool wish more companies did stuff like this i've got a, a brief respite here space pod is has been getting swarmed by fans. He's been running into people who recognize him from uh, by his EVA suit. Uh, they've got a museum up front. That's pretty cool. They've got some uh, bikes, fr you know, notable bikes from Kawasaki's history, race winners, uh, old bikes. They've they've even got like a jet ski and a snowmobile. Uh, one of the old computers from when they first started uh, when they opened the headquarters here. It's like old, one of those crazy little like crate box computers that's shaped like a like an egg like it's supposed to look futuristic it's cool man this place is pretty neat like i never knew this was here so if you're ever in the southern southern california area like irvine is we're near irvine we're in lake forest which is a little bit south of irvine if you're ever down in this area and you're a motorcycle person especially if you're a kawasaki person it's definitely worth your time to come out here and check it out so they're letting us sit on the bikes and i figure i might as well check each of them out and do a little bit of a, a show and tell and give you some feedback on how they look and how they feel. This is the ZX-10R. Uh, I'm actually surprised how comfortable it is to sit on. I expected a, a true super sport to be a little bit more uncomfortable, a little bit more raw, but they sort of seem to have found a pretty good balance here. 
the stance is pretty aggressive. I'm tall, I've got long arms and I'm still leaned over pretty far forward, but you know, that comes with the territory of a super sport. Uh, the handlebars are actually pretty comfortable. The angle is very comfortable. Uh, if I come down and lean in a little closer, still comfortable. Like the positioning, the, just the geometry of everything is very nice. It's very good. The seat is pretty comfortable. It's a little bit stiffer than what I'm used to on my 650, but overall it's, you know, it's pretty good. Uh, I like it. It feels nice. It's, it's, it's really light. It's probably dry, but you know, it feels good, man. I like it. You could, I thought this is easier to stand on. Is it tall? No, it's short. I thought. And it's a little bit narrow too. Everything's short for you, Mr. I know. Oh, wow. Is it not too bad? It's not bad. Yeah. It's kind of it's better than the VX6. Yeah, that's what I thought. It's more of, it's a, it's a rocket. It's not like a... Yeah. It's a little heavy, but that's not bad at all. And it feels really comfortable. It's like a nice yeah yeah dude if you'd sit on that thing all of these feel like toys <laughs> this is the zx 14 r uh, just to give you an idea of what it looks like here it's very long it's a very stretched out bike i mean compared to other sport bikes it's quite low space pod is a little bit shorter of a guy but he can even stand this thing up with both feet on the ground uh it's actually very comfortable i think it's got an even more upright seating position than the zx 10 r uh, a little bit, you know, the handlebars are a little closer, the geometry is slightly more relaxed, but you can scoot back on the seat pretty far and lean in and you still get that behind the glass feel. Obviously, I mean, this thing is, it's a bullet. ZX-14R is a big, big bike in terms of uh, speed. Well, I mean, I've never ridden one, but I mean, that's the, the reputation, right? Uh, you know, it, it's comfortable. Again, the seat, is, the seat is a little more comfortable than the 10R. I guess that would come naturally with a, a bike that's got more of a, a, a t well, I don't want to call it a touring, but like in car, in the car world, you have true sports cars, which are a, a little bit more raw. And then you have uh, grand touring cars or like tourers that are still sporty, but they're a little bit more for cruising, road trips, stuff like that. And I would categorize this bike sort of along with uh, those type of, of cars. I would make that comparison. It's it's obviously fast, it's obviously designed for sport, but uh, I think that uh, it leans a little bit more towards comfort and cruising, long distance riding, just a little bit. Uh, but yeah, it's comfortable. It's nice to sit on. Yeah, now I'm gonna give the 636 ZX6R a try. Uh, you can see it's got a little bit more, we're going back to the uh, super sport look here. Obviously the smallest of the three. Ah, sitting, ooh, super light. Man, after sitting on those other bikes, this one feels just like, almost like a, it's, I would almost say it's bicycle-like in its weight. Feels just so, so light. I don't know what else to say. Um, the, uh, everything about it is a lot more aggressive, actually, sitting on it. You'll notice the seat is a lot firmer. It's not as comfortable, and the angle, actually, well, I'll show you after I get off the bike. Uh, you're leaned forward pretty far and you can scoot your butt back and get even more aggressive. And this is without even like leaning down. If I lean that down into the glass, obviously I'm going to be more into the, uh, in, into the glass. It, you know, if I lean down more, I can be more aggressive, but in general, like just sitting on the bike, it's got a very aggressive stance. The handlebars are very low. They're very swept back. Like the angle of my hands is just like, I feel like my wrists are being twisted in an odd way here, unless I lean in. Like if I lean down behind the glass, the, the uh, the hand positioning, like the geometry becomes more natural. But again, this is not how you, you don't want to spend hours riding on this bike like this. This bike is very aggressively designed. This is clearly meant for somebody who's going to be riding aggressively, maybe going to the track, stuff like that. Uh, I would say this is, would not be a comfortable bike to ride on the street too much. Uh, it, this it, Sitting on this bike actually reminds me of why I decided to go for the 650 are instead of a super sport this time around because uh yeah as cool as this bike is as aggressive as this bike is as good of a reputation as this bike has for performance it's just like to commute to work on this thing like it, it will tire you out like i can tell just like sitting on it i'm getting tired like my my hands are getting sore a little bit just resting the my upper body weight on the handlebars 
And, uh, you know, if I don't want to do that, then I've got to hold myself up with my core, you know, my core strength. But since you have to be leaned forward, like holding yourself up with your core at this sort of odd forward angle is extremely tiring. It's going to be hard on your back. So, you know, this bike is uh, as cool as it is, as good of a reputation as it has, I would say, you know, it probably is cool, probably is a really good bike, but not comfortable at all. Not for me, at least. Of course, everybody, you know, YMMV. Oh yeah, and I wanted to mention this about the seat. This edge here, this is where my uh, inner thigh goes, sort of rests on the seat. It's very hard. It doesn't have a lot of give in it, so it kind of digs in, and I think that would sort of, I don't know, maybe it would soften up if you owned the bike for a long time, and it would sort of break in, but just sitting on it right here, right now, it's, it's pretty uncomfortable. I feel like I would get a bruise there. Now I'm going to sit on a dirt bike, a proper dirt bike, Kawasaki KX450F. Dude, it's so tall. Like, I can't believe how tall it is. <laughs> Holy cow, man. This thing is just like... <laughs> I'm 6'4". I've got like a 36-inch inseam. Really long legs. And even I like can't touch the ground unless I straighten my legs all the way up. Man, it's just like... I never, I've never sat on a proper dirt bike before. They really are super tall. But uh, yeah, they're not super comfortable either. I mean, this is a very purpose-built bike. It's not meant to be super comfortable, but like this long, thin seat has almost no padding in it. It's very, it's very stiff, very rough. I thought, I, I guess for some reason, I thought it would be more comfortable, but it's just really very, very, very raw. It's very bare bones, which is good if all you want is to go fast on dirt, but. What is this thing coming off? I think the, uh, whatever this is called, the face smash handlebar guard. One of the threads seems to be coming off. Yeah, I don't know how I'd feel about one of these. Now I have to try this cruiser, this Vulcan. I sat on this bike earlier and I was surprised actually. I mean, I know, I have the knowledge that these bikes, these big cruisers are heavier, but actually sitting on one, like you don't appreciate just how heavy they are until you actually sit on them it takes some you know it really does take some muscle just to like get them up off of the kickstand but man once you're on them it's like you it really is like sitting in an armchair i mean people joke about it but it, like literally i'm sitting on a on a leather a leather chair here it's like a cat it's like a, it's like a couch you know it's like i feel like i can just like lean back i mean i can see the appeal now i understand why people get these bikes so expensive though holy crap you could buy like two and a half of my bikes for this but you know it's a different mindset different thing you know it's a different world people are going not you know people are going for a different sort of thing when they pick up one of these kind of bikes man all the stuff that it comes with i mean people used to customize their bikes to add these things now they come with it you know you've got your radio volume tune whatever electronic cruise control it's nice, man. It's very comfortable. My girlfriend sat on the back, and it's like she's got her own leather armchair back there. It's very, it's cool. It's pretty nice. I mean, I don't know. I, I'm curious what it would be like to ride one of these because it's so heavy standing it up. I don't know what to expect from actually riding it, what it would handle like. But, you know, in terms of comfort, yeah, it's great. Uh, I would say my arms are reaching out kind of like... I'm a tall guy. I've got long arms, and I feel like I'm reaching a little bit for these handlebars. So if you're shorter... Uh, I'm 6'4", and this is the reach of my arm. Like, it's almost fully extended here. You know, if I fully extend, it only gives me, like, another two inches past, maybe three inches past where the handlebars are at. So your arms are pretty far out. If you want to make a turn, if you want to move the handlebars to full lock, you've got to, like, turn your shoulders to follow the handlebar around. It's very interesting. It's very different from what I'm used to, obviously. But I would be interested in giving it a try. Very nice. Very nice. It's got all these little hidden cargo compartments and stuff. That's cool. Huge windscreen. God, I don't even trust the kickstand. This thing is so heavy. They got some more bikes out here, including this one. This is the new Ninja 1000. It's a leader bike, but it's set up like the Ninja series of bikes. Not the, the ZX bikes, but just the, the, uh, the more standard style of bike. With the upright stance a little more comfortable. So it's basically like my bike, a 650, but it's a leader bike. It's got a 1,000cc a four-cylinder engine in it. And, uh, well, yeah, I guess it's what you would expect. It's sort of what I'm used to riding. It's super comfortable, very easy, natural riding position. The bars sit at a very neutral angle. That's good. 
Uh, the seat's very comfortable. It's reasonably soft. You know, it's it's kind of like it's almost like riding a cruiser the way you sit on a ninja it's cool man yeah it feels just like sitting on my bike but you've got a thousand cc's under you man i'm i guess i'm happy they're adding it to the line they must have hopefully they've done some research and know that they have a market for it i didn't know there was one but it makes sense i suppose cool bike this is the new ninja 650 for the 2014 year this is basically the same bike that i have with just some uh, cosmetic upgrades yeah it feels identical it's got the same hand this is my bike pretty much different uh, gauge cluster here going on but otherwise it's the same bike super comf oh actually it looks like it got cheaper <laughs> it's interesting uh yeah it's a great bike uh, i don't have to do too much of a review on it because you see it in every one of my videos but here it is anyways in green oh they changed the tank design here it's just like a flat metal black tank and then the the color accent you get is on this uh piece of fairing on the front here so they changed that, but otherwise, I mean, it's, on the surface at least, it's pretty much the same bike. You can see all the engine parts, everything looks the same, so that's not too much different than what I'm used to. Here's a, a Ninja 300. I'm going to try sitting on one of these. I've got a 250, so that that's my only comparison. Oh, this is pretty comfortable compared to my 250. This feels like a, a, a much more modern bike. It's got better... Well, it's, it's more... It's a little sportier, I guess. My 250 is almost like a, a cruiser. This is fairly comfortable. It's, yeah, it's a, it's a lot sportier. They really, you know, they made an effort to make the, the newer baby ninjas, as they are affectionately termed, a lot more aggressive and sporty, and I feel like they have pulled that off. You can still feel in the, uh, you can feel the, uh, you can feel that, like, the clutch is lighter and everything. It's definitely a smaller bike. It's not the, uh, it's not a, a super sport in every aspect, but it's a lot closer than the, the 250s used to be, so. 68.9 miles per gallon. There's a selling point for you. Here's a Kawasaki KLR650. This is one of the bikes that I'm interested in maybe for my next bike because, uh, like I've been talking about in some of my other videos, I'm getting more interested in touring lately uh, and adventure riding, and I want to be able to do a little bit of uh, dirt riding, stuff like that. So I'm interested in uh, the KLR. Yeah, I'm interested in this bike because it's got it's a very good dual purpose bike by reputation at least. Yeah, I, I would like to try one out one of these days. Give one, take one for a little spin. I'll sit on it at least. Give it a, give that much a try. KLR 650. It's so tall. Uh. The seat is a little harder than I'm used to, but it is sort of comfortable. The seat is so wide, that's the thing. Like, it's got such a wide seat. If I sit a little more forward on it, that part's narrower, but it kind of digs into my inner thighs a little bit more than I would like. But then again, you're not going to spend most of your time at a stop. If I put my foot up, then it doesn't dig anymore. It's kind of like I'm sitting on a bench. It's very, very different from uh, the sporty feel that I'm used to. The handlebars are very wide. I guess that's probably for the, you know, to accommodate the uh, off-road capabilities. Uh, dirt bikes and uh, bikes that are meant to be able to go off-road generally have wider handlebars. I guess that's so you can put more torque on the handlebars. Uh, but uh, yeah, it actually feels okay. It's it's odd being up so high, and you sit even more upright than I do on my Ninja, so it's, it's definitely a very different feel, but uh, I don't know how I feel about these tiny little round mirrors. I might swap those out. Cool, man. KLRs. I feel more nervous standing tall bikes up on their kickstands, but so that's it for a coffee break with Kawasaki at Kawasaki's U.S. headquarters down here in Lake Forest. It's been a fun day. Got all the bikes on display. It's very been a very small event. It was a very limited invite list, so it's very personal. You know, everybody has the opportunity to talk to Kawasaki employees one-on-one -on -one, and they've got everybody here they've got uh, warranty claims department they've got uh customer service they've got r d guys they've got the uh, product line specialist everybody's here so any questions you have you know you you, you get one-on-one -on -one time with everybody and what's cool is ev all the kawasaki employees that are here had the opportunity to you know volunteer to come out for this or not you know if they wanted to so everybody who's here is here because they want to be they're here because they, they share the passion for the company they work for, and that's so rare these days. So yeah, they've got a, rare, a very rare company environment here where everybody sort of 
is together. They got a very, you know, it's sort of, it's cool. <laughs> That's so cute. Oh. What? Are we all getting pillow pets? <laughs>